Welcome. It's a lovely Sunday. This is Scorecard on City TV. My name is Fentio Tahiru Fentio. The best 90 minutes of your life, the best sports show in the country. Uh, over the next 90 minutes, of course, we'll play back some of the best sports in action for you. And what a weekend it's been uh, from the Ghana Premier League working Faisal, stay top of the, the league, of course. Uh, Richard Comey was in action in New York. It did not end well for him. Lomachenko absolutely destroyed him. Uh, the Premier League, it was a penalty festival on Saturday uh, with Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Man United all needing penalties to win in the Premier League. Arsenal, of course, cruise past Southampton. We'll play back all of that action for you. Uh, in the Serie A, well, Juventus and AC Milan were both involved in draws, but Napoli were shocked by Empoli at home. Nobody saw that coming. Boy Meneca back to uh, winning ways, of course. Back on top of the Bundesliga, of course, extended their lead at the top to six points, but Dortmund dropped points. Nobody saw that coming either. In Spain, Barcelona's uh, honeymoon period for Xavi over. They were held again by Osasuna this weekend. Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid currently ongoing. Uh, and then, uh, if we take you elsewhere, uh, to Formula One. And we'll have a lot of time for Formula One today because uh, Max Verstappen is the newest Formula One champion after a dramatic last day at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Uh, it's all spiraling into legal issues because of what happened in the final lap. Hopefully when we have time, we will delve into that and try to explain to you why that issue is controversial and why it could go all the way. But for now, Mercedes' uh, protest has been thrown out. They've indicated intention to appeal. All of that to come in the next 90 minutes. The show is live and interactive on social media. So do send me a message. 0549986996, WhatsApp number. Let me know what you make of all of the weekend's action from whichever team you support, what you made of Richard Corby's performance. I'm interested in all of that. Uh, also, uh, on Twitter, preferably, leave me a message with the hashtag scorecard. What you make of any of the sporting action from the weekend. Whatever it is your opinion is, I'm interested. Leave me a message on Twitter using the hashtag scorecard. My name is Fento, Tahir Fento. Welcome to the show. We'll take a short break when we come back. I introduce my guests, the usual two musketeers, and then we can start showing you some highlights. Welcome to the show uh, one more time. From wherever you're tuning in, I appreciate you. Thank you very much, uh, as usual. I've gone back to my uh, Sakura haircut. I hope you like it. Everybody says I'm looking dapper. Because uh, Vanimli has other ideas, but I don't care. Uh, so if you just cry, I won't ask him how he's doing. So that I use that opportunity to diss my haircut. <laughs> Daniel Grazi, how are you? Coach, how are you doing? Easy. 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 I don't know why you tend to make life extremely difficult for yourself. I how is that difficult? <laughs> Come, let me take you to a proper barber. Let them give you some good haircut. Uh -huh. So that you look good. The is Lord that... is my father now. No, 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 come on. There's somebody looking at the show, watching the show. You know the person wouldn't, doesn't like to see you like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, are you not aware about this? <laughs> I'm not aware of anything. Oh, so you, you, are, you want me to talk oh, now? Please tell us, tell us, tell <laughs> us. You want me to talk? I asked Daniel how he's doing. You, I haven't even introduced you. You, you told Nimbly. the whole world you not introduce me. Nimb sure. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> the one is trying to blackmail me now. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, are you? I'm good, but please, for the sake of that lady, don't look like this again. Yeah. <laughs> this is your last warning. The next time you bring this on TV, <laughs> the whole world will get to know. Granted, now you can answer the question. I'm very well. Are you all right? You're very, very well. Namely, yes, sir. We'll have quite a lot on the show today. We'll begin with boxing where Richard Comey was hoping to get himself back into contention for the lightweight title. He's a former champion, lost his title to Teofimo Lopez. He was coming up against a man that was once regarded as the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world. Certainly the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in his division, the lightweight division. Uh, Vasily Lomachenko, the man from uh, Ukraine, he lost his title to the same man, Teofimo Lopez. He beat both of them. Uh, and then the two of them were coming in to try and see 
if any of them can get themselves back into contention for the world title. What ensued at the Madison Square Garden was the, one of the most one-sided boxing uh, bouts you would ever see. A masterful display from the Ukrainian, absolutely outclassing Richard Comey, and walking away with a unanimous victory. the beating that uh, Richard Comey received at the hands of uh, Lomachenko. Comey did say that he let the country know after the fight. Um, he actually shed tears. He cried uh, after this particular fight. But uh, no one could have, have any arguments whatsoever who deserved to win. Uh, the Ukrainian was class above Comey. Had everything Comey didn't have. Pace, precision, even power, which he said to Comey was deemed to possess. He didn't utilize any of that. Uh, there's no title, of course, for Lomachenko for winning this fight, but it puts him in a position to go and fight George Cambosos all the way down in Australia for those three belts that Cambosos currently holds after he beat Teofimo Lopez. Uh, guys, Daniel, let me begin with you on this one because, I mean, <laughs> you and I stayed up all night to watch this fight. Um, right from the start, it, it was almost as if Comey was never in it. After round one, it, it, was, it, it was one of the saddest things I have watched from boxing in a long time. It was just basically a one-way affair. Beyond just the beating, also the, some of the, the conduct of Lomachenko. At one point, he gave him some uppercut and asked him to go and sit down in his corner. Then the next moment, in round seven, he knocked him down. And then when he got up, he knocked him and he was wobbling back, and then he said, he, he signals to call me his corner and says, come on, throw in the towel. It was almost like he was playing with him. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are speechless. Look, this is how I watched about. First two rounds, of course, I'm Ghanaian. I have to support Komi. After that, you could just tell they were, look, they were class apart. So then, instead of being sad for Komi, I rather grew in admiration for Lomachenko's skill. Mm. That's how I watched about it. Was, it was just brilliant to watch. I've not seen somebody have total control over a bout like this in a very, very long time. And you see, this is where we need to be honest with ourselves. When we're doing the pre-bout analysis, we all understood that this was going to be a huge mountain for, for Komi to climb. The only thing he had in his ass now was his, was his power. But Swinging that right arm or that right hand and landing is also another very big problem because Lumachenko 
hasn't gotten knocked down in his life before. He doesn't get knocked down. He knows how to evade these punches. He knows how to beat you so well you, and nullify your, 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 your skill. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did. From the beginning, he started working um, a Kome. And you see, the jabs, usually the jabs are used to weight off your, your yes. opponent. So, but his jabs are so heavy. Like yeah. His jabs are so heavy and so quick. A couple of them, three or four of them, and I tweeted something, of course, ironically. I said he fires about f five million punches in one second. It's, in it's round so seven, quick. actually, in round seven, he threw and landed 37 punches in, in one round, in, in one three round. minutes. And you see, and at the end of round six, Kome had only landed, is it 18% of his, of, his, of, his, of his punches? And, and that's what Lomachenko forced him to do because... He hits him and his movement is so difficult for Kome to deal with that Kome started throwing these very wild punches. Just throw and hope that one of them lands. But Lomachenko is that good. He's that quick. He's that evasive. He's tech. Look, and it's the movement. If, if you watch, it's very unorthodox. It's, he swings. He's, it's like he's coming towards you. Then he sneaks behind you and he's hitting you from behind. And then you turn and you, you almost cannot find him or you can almost cannot... Uh, 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 your eyes cannot set, uh, set exactly where he is. And that's how difficult he is. And that is the reason why when Teofimo beat him, everybody was, was shocked. This is somebody who is, he's not ended his career, but they're already talking about he being in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Yeah. That's, look, that's yeah. how good he is. And that is why I, I, I choose to... I mean, to, the combinations are just... Look, that's why I choose to, to take it from the point where this is a very competitive division. And the fact that Richard Comey is one of the most respected guys in this division. Says a and lot. he's held the title before. For me, it's, it's, it's very remarkable. It was always going to be a mountain for him to climb. We knew that he would probably not get knocked out, but he would be outclassed like the way he was. And this is exactly how I panned out. So personally, I wasn't too surprised. But of course, the fact that we are Ghanaian and the fact that he had to watch this for 12 rounds made it a bit sad. But as I said, I was more... I, I, from the you know, admiration you, you point of view, impressed. impressed by Lomachenko you know, than, than, than being disappointed, disappointed with Komi. Absolutely, uh, you know, and you mentioned the 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 power, the pace, the position, and all of the combination punches that he's throwing. I was just looking at the stat, up to round ten, he had landed Lomachenko had landed one hundred and eighty-eight punches on Komi, and Komi had only managed fifty-eight. That's how one-sided it was. Is he, uh, I was with Nathan yesterday on, 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 on the EPL show when we spoke about this off air. And I told him that I'm not going to waste my time to, <laughs> to watch it. Because like Crantin just said, the difference in class before, during, if there's, uh, surely there's not going to be any after. The difference in class was there for everybody to see. But I didn't watch it live. I watched the highlight of it, and I got a full clip to watch around 2 p.m. this afternoon. Mm -hmm. These are the things I was hoping to see in comedy. I was hoping to see a game plan. I didn't see one. I was hoping to see a very mobile comedy, at least with his feet. I didn't see any. Mm. Rather, he stood there with his two foot wide open, ready to do the pound for pound thing. Then the moment you do that, it makes it virtually impossible for your upper body to move around. Look at Lomachenko. His feet were not wide open. They no, were very close he, together. So, so because mobile. they were that close together, it allows him to move this way, pop, pop, move that. So if you don't see that in a boxer, Acknowledging the opponent, you ask yourself, those people training Richard Comey, what exactly are they telling him? Or what exactly did they tell him in preparation to this fight? Mm -hmm. Granting. There was absolutely no game plan whatsoever. The same manner in which he lost the title, where he thought he could come and stand toe to toe with Teofimo Lopez, mm -hmm. he got knocked down. Again, one would have thought that in this particular bout, he will show a bit more 
Do I use the word improvement from his previous fight? I thought he actually I, did. I didn't I, I see thought he, no. No, I see, uh, It's one of the reasons he didn't get knocked out. No, 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 look. I actually think this man could that have he, knocked him he, out. This was an improved performance on what we saw from, no. from Tofimo. I guess yes. Tofimo took him out after two rounds. The reason why Tofimo took him out after two rounds was because he, those wild punches just caught him and that was it. But if you look at this, this is, look at how humble he is. Look at even It's almost Lomachenko. too nice. It's not humility. Yeah. It's too nice. Look, look at Lomachenko. He was virtually axing the corner of Richard Comey to throw him the towel. They are very good friends. So he's very good friends with everybody in the division. That is why, you remember I told you some time ago that if you are a boxer, there has to be that wickedness about you. Because you cannot go and present your face out there and get somebody to whip your face and knock, beat your and face. And disfigure it like that. Like that. So yes, my biggest worry is where does this leave him? Because he's not going to get closer to the title. It's clear yeah. that the three guys, Teofimos, Lomachenko, and the reigning champion, he's of no match to any of them. There's quite a, a few of them, also Haney and, you know, this. Look, maybe, what can he do, Granty? Retire? No. Not really. He just needs to keep being in the mix. What is certain, though, no, is that he doesn't look like he's going to be involved in a big fight what anytime soon. What is going soon. to keep him in the mix? Then he's going to be fighting one chinny, one chinny, one chinny, sort of. I mean, he got 700,000 US dollars from this that's fight. That's what I'm saying. Then that's what he's going to be all about now. Because there's no way he's beating any of those guys. Then we want him to stay in the division and go and challenge for the title. To be fair, he's, so, to be fair, he's 34. He's, that's it. He's held a title, title before. before. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, but he's, I think it's, at, it's time to cash out. Yeah, I'm business. looking at the situation where if he's going to stay in there, stay in there to do what? Fent, what is he going to stay in there to do? But he can also retire now. No, but he's not going to... Uh, so he should just be there. When the uh, but champion... Uh, so do you know how many fighters are in that division? So he has to be there. To, to do what? So maybe one of them leaves the division and moves up a weight. The, the problem is, if even one of them were to leave, there are two more. Yes, yeah, so, so he can get a rematch somewhere. From where? From Te Teofimo. It's to possible. To do what? With with the, the title? With I'm sure if he gets plan. Teofimo with for a second fight, he stands a chance. Teofimo was absolutely battered by Cambosos Jr. No one saw that coming. Do you think Richard Comey can beat Teofimo Lopez? I it's possible. He can beat him. We all didn't expect Cambosos to beat Teofimo Lopez. Exactly. We only expect Teofimo The same way we didn't beat, expect yeah. Teofimo to beat Lomachenko. When Teofimo beat Lomachenko... It, it was a no, shock. It was a shock. When Teofimo beat Comey, it was a shock. It wasn't a shock. It was a but shock. It was, no. He went into those fights unbeaten. He had never lost. Yeah, but he'd never faced any of the big boys. And he whipped him good. <laughs> so look, what your advice to call me is to what look he should look at himself again assess the situation better with uh -huh. his people and look at the division if he cannot really challenge for the title he like he should cash out and come come back is he, he's made what? some good money that's the thing boxing you can only cash out when you are hot he's no longer hot exactly so, the so cash he needs out to come made. and sleep <laughs> Normally, don't say that. You should come and sleep. All right, let's, thank you. The matter. Right, let's move it on. That's the lowdown on uh, Comey's performance. But, um, I mean, he's a former world champion, so we have to give him that respect. Um, and, uh, you know, he just didn't... I mean, it was obvious. Obviously, of course, we couldn't say it, but we all just knew that Comey was going to get beaten. Uh, that was... If there was what, something that was clear as day, it was that Comey was going to get beaten. So you are, so you are saying what I'm saying now? No. He cannot beat any of them. He oh, cannot no, no, beat no, no. any of maybe them. Lomachenko, maybe. But the rest of them, any of them is beatable. Poor car. Uh, true story. True story. Let me show you some Ghana Premier League matches now. Indiana Stars, they beat Great Olympics by one goal to nil. Uh, take a look at the highlights. Very intelligent one. Striker should be getting at the end of that cross. Shot is on target. First goal registered for Indiana Stars, the home side who is uh, currently on cloud nine. Causing all problem, but from the corner kick, and there you see the corner kick from Jelfi, quickly take it, and uh, Abbas Mohamed, nobody closing him down. That shot straight into the head of uh, Brighton J. But Such an awkward goal to concede from Great Olympics' point of view. 11 Wonders and Dreams FC also ended one all. Uh, 11 Wonders scored very, very late into the game. Uh, to secure that one or draw. Dreams FC yet again giving away a lead very late on. 
since morning. Shot is fired on target. Meanwhile, on the far side, it looks like Dreams have uh, gotten a goal. 11 wonders. Oh, what a finish. Just when wonders thought they were in Wonderland, that long pass from Yakubu. Not well defended again from Jumo, but look at the control and the finish from Watch. Goalkeeper It's not saving that. They swung into the 18 yard box again. A quick turn and a shot on target. Can he get a goal this time? Yes! Gani! Moment. Gani. Quick thinking. Got hold of the ball. Quick turn. Can you? Wonderful goal. <laughs> One out draw. Let me show you the full results from the Ghana Premier League this weekend. Uh, Kifaisa won 1 0, so they are still top of the Ghana Premier League at the moment. Um, Bibiani Gold Stars, they beat the Shame United 1 0 as well. Karela United were the biggest winners of the weekend. They beat Lions. Lions just seem like they are not interested in playing in the is. Ghana Premier League. They've been losing Basa Basa every weekend. They are lost straight to Karela United. Are you and their coach has left. No, but are you surprised? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't mm -hmm. be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, Legon what, no. They Legon shouldn't cities. be the team in the league. <laughs> Legon they should not be. It's because <laughs> of the selfish <laughs> and, and, and very... Mm. You finish. Le you come to me. <laughs> Legon City's... <laughs> Bacon Chelsea ended nil-nil. Uh, RTU you lost at home to Mediama 1-0. King Faisal. Uh, Faisal, yes. Top of the table. They won 1-0 against uh, Bina Sharks. And after 17 years, Ashanti mm -hmm. Gold finally gets a win at Wafa. The last time they went, they, they took six. They've gone to redeem themselves, mm -hmm. getting a one win away from home at Sogakope uh, Arena. Guys, quick thoughts on uh, the Ghana Premier League results. Can we so? We should begin to take them seriously, no? Of course. It's a large Gruzers team, isn't it? Yeah. Look, I'm so happy for them. To be honest with you, I'm so happy for them because yeah. last season, by now, look, they were all over the place in sixes and sevens. That if you look at the manner in which this team has been transformed, it's like it's been, it's been a complete 360 turn, yeah, yeah. turn around in fortunes in in the way they are playing their football, in their belief, in the coaching, even from management, mm -hmm. everything is spot on. And for me, when you watch them play. Clearly, they know what they're about. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they know the system. They know how to go about playing their football. Yeah. Thanks to they, Coach Nuruddin. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, he's one coach that I've always regarded. Yeah, yeah no, he's very he's experienced. Been in the very very quiet. Yeah. He doesn't talk Mostly much. Mostly assistant. Assistant. He doesn't talk, yeah. but he's always been the guy yeah. doing the job. And I'm happy for him because we, we need coaches like that to step up yeah. and then show their true traits. And then the next game I want to talk about is the uh, Accra Lions people. Look. Karela and Accra Lions. They will get more defeats. They said they came to sell players. So, I mean, that's not surprising. They came to sell players. Yeah. So they, they only play to sell players. Okay. I interviewed their coach. That's what he said. So, okay. so, for him, there's no surprise there, honestly. So, he's left? He has left, yes. Why? Well, they won't sell players again? But they will sell, yeah. but the coach isn't the one that sells the players. So, don't worry. The management. They have been but selling yes, the players. Exactly. Okay, that's yeah. good. I haven't seen them to be that good enough. Look, from even from oh. Division One, <laughs> they were never the best were, team in that division. They were quite good. I watched them beat. I'm uh, saying, hold on, I watched them beat Tama Youth in Tama by two goals to I was there, and this was first was against a second. That was that oh. was a one-off. This was the, the game between the top and two. And I'm saying that, that and they haven't Tema Youth at home. That two was near. even after that, they still shouldn't be the team to have qualified. You know this way. <laughs> I don't know that. You will know to <laughs> 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 because if I beat my competitor. <laughs> no, you see, if you beat my if you beat me as a competitor, it doesn't mean you should be the team who will qualify. Yeah. No, because it is a stretch. It's a series. At the end of the series, who deserve to be in the Premiership? Mm. Obviously, it's Tama Youth, not yeah, Akalai. Yeah, that's why so you for say me, the team that so for qualified. Me, yeah, come on, man. That is why this... I am, look, I'm very confident that at the end of the day, we will be embarrassed again when the ruling from CAS come out on this particular Akalai Tama Youth Have you Youth seen issue. the CAS case? You, you don't know what is going to happen. 
I have seen the case. I have read the case. <laughs> I've that not I've been seen said. the case. I'm saying, uh, you know, when I no, say I have I seen the case, are... you know. <laughs> 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 you see, the CAF, the cast cases are public documents. That's what I'm saying. I have not seen it. I have. I, I say you've not seen the case that time. Are you too I have, I have heard about the case, but I have not seen, seen the case. case. And now I'm telling you that I have seen the case. <laughs> I have read the case. I can even tell you the date of the payment of the money into the case. How I can tell you all those things if you put me. Mr. You investigative Journalist. Your duties. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but, but friend, friend, on a more serious note, on a more serious note, I yeah. think our football, if you watch our games, Charlie, we are far I behind. Cry. I, I know where Charlie, you are getting Look, we are far behind. And I wish the people at the FA would set up and then find a better way of helping our class. We need to remodel our football. Charlie, Charlie. Look. It, it's a bit stale. You know, it's like it's a bit when you compare to, but you know, we, we're trying to encourage it. I, I know all the other stuff that the FA is doing from like the grassroots level, they just completed the KGL and the 17 wonderful championship. They've elevated women's football as well, just finished the Super Cup. Those are all wonderful things that they're doing that at the Premier League level just still seem to be lacking something. But, um, you know, the boys are trying and uh. We'll keep supporting them. Uh, that uh, Kotoko and House of Folk were supposed to play this weekend. House of Folk, of course, are now coming back from Algeria. Took them five days to return. So that match has been rescheduled. Would, would you give me one or two minutes to fire the people <laughs> at please, House of Folk? Please, please. Well, uh, uh, what do you want to see? Okay, it's very simple. First of all, what is the position of Elijah Kambi in House of Folk? What's that got to do with football? Oh, I'm problem. firing the team for, for disgracing Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> for embarrassing Ghana. <laughs> Look, <laughs> what is his position in the team? He's a board member. Board member. Who puts him on the board? Toby Afede. The board it? crowd. I thought he said he has stepped down mm -hmm. crowd. Mm -hmm. Who puts him on the board? Toby Afede. As what? Aaron, man. Aaron. So go and buy this, then he goes. Go and do this, then <laughs> that. Go and do you this. don't know that for sure. That's what I want to know. Because the manner uh, in okay. which he goes about disrespecting the supporters of this club, thank you. It's yeah. legendary. Mm. It's gangant one. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> I've never seen a board member so disrespectful to the supporters of the club. He says he is part of those running. You take these boys for uh, 14 hours transit. You feed them rice and fries. fries. <laughs> they don't <laughs> eat good food. Then when they go and they are completely overrun, and annihilated, that is the word, and you, come, you back come back and blame them and blame them with such audacity. And the people there sit there and allow this man to spill beans, like the way he's been talking. So he should be sacked quick. Immediately. <laughs> I have said here on this program, I'm going to say it again. Right. For as long as Alaji can be, I can be, I can be, mm -hmm. I don't even want to remember his name properly. For as long as Alaji Akambi mm -hmm. continue to disrespect the supporters of Hasofo, it is Togbe Afede who has given him the right to do so. Because okay. if this man can tell me and you that even if his wife, if his wife support us, even if his wife and children are sold, put on the stock exchange and uh, uh, auction out, mm -hmm. They cannot equate their sale to how much money Toby Afede has spent on Hasafo. It tells you the level of the man. All right, thank you, Nimli. You've delivered your sermon. Uh, <laughs> watch this scorecard on ZTTV. We'll take a very short break. Daniel has decided to see this submission to Nimli, so I'm moving on. Uh, but we'll take a very, very quick break now. When we come back, I've got some of your messages, and then we shoot straight to England. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. This is Scorecard on CTTV uh, from wherever you've tuned in. Um, interested in your thoughts on what we've been talking about so far. So far, we've shown you Richard Comey's defeat to Vasily Lomachenko. Uh, and then we've also shown you some Ghana Premier League highlights as well. Uh, let me take some messages. Um, first, I'm beginning on Twitter. That's where Awal Jara says, kindly tell coach to tone down on House of Oak, we shall bounce back stronger. Uh, DKS Francis says, 
can have a three hour show of banter. Interesting. Roland uh, Gambero says Richard Corbyn's performance was extremely poor, arithmetically, shambolic, logically abysmal, sportively pathetic, and nationally embarrassing. <laughs> I thought I was watching a 3D boxing fight. Uh, he should quit boxing. You guys shouldn't do that. Hey, I try to for BBC. Look, I agree. He cannot beat any you of the You are learning there. from Christopher Nimli School of He cannot beat any of the guys there. No more oh, enjoy. Oh, no more stop that. You should go and rest. Uh, Kion says, Martin Odegaard with his first career goal uh, header. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Kwame Knox says, Lomachenko versus Kome, a case study of Manny Pacquiao versus Joshua Clote. I know. I was just thinking about the same thing, you know. We can't have the top quality boxers getting our boxers and you sit yes, there and schooling them, them like, like that. that. As one else will never tolerate what? this. He won't go down without a fight. Even I caught it. Nana uh, Ajenin Boatin says, I beg you, the man you coach and coach Milo have the same football idea, one good project. I really enjoyed F1 today, he says. That's a message from Cleopas. Derek says, Charlie, how Fred is playing right now, he can win Ballon d'Or if Man United uh, win Champions League and Brazil win the World Cup. But we all know that will not happen. Very from Danfasset, that message. Bugabad says, I'm enjoying the show, but honestly, Lomachenko was uh, lenient with Komi. It was a mismatch in the first place. Uh, watching from Asante Mampon, uh, sorry. In the other Tate Thompson says, Oh my God, I can finally watch my favorite show. Uh, Coach, I saw you at Seco on Friday evening and wanted to call you. By the way, your nose mask was way high up your nose. You know? I figured it must be United doing. Glad to have you guys on my TV screens. Again, the COVID is real. It is real. The new variant, eh? If Omicron. You, you die quick. <laughs> so, so get me vaccinated. I me, when I'm walking, I'm covered. I don't want any. Look, Charlie, next time, yes, wait. I wait. Don't get <laughs> closer. Look, the new variant, eh, Granted, is dead. <laughs> because it's what happened. So, to get. edge people to get vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, I have vaccinated yeah, myself. Edge, edge people. I, at least I took the Johnson and Johnson. But the J &J. other J &J, yes. I took J and J. Yes. What, what is the name? Uh, Astra, uh, Astra, 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 they are all good. Yes. Go and vaccinate yourself. If you don't, yes. you die when COVID <laughs> catches you. Mm -hmm, please, now please. the new variant they say when you die, your eyes will open like this. <laughs> Have you seen somebody dead and his eyes are open? Nimbly, stop scaring people. No, go and vaccinate. If yes. you don't vaccinate. No, yes, I know, I get that part. I uh, ask you to help you. Is put COVID not deadly? Yes, it is. So you die with your eyes but open if you don't <laughs> vaccinate yourself. <laughs> you sit there when I'm talking and be laughing. <laughs> Please stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you better go don't, vaccinate yourself. Don't do that. Oh. Don't do don't this. Do me. That. I have a wife. I have three beautiful daughters. I have vaccinated. My, my, look, my family means Everyone a Everyone is vaccinated. There are people out there who are not vaccinated. No, you, I mean your family. Of course. Uh -huh. well, because we don't want to have anything to do with COVID. I'm too young to die and leave my beautiful wife. Who would service her? <laughs> <laughs> look at this man. <laughs> Stop that, Crafty. <laughs> you <to> stop that. <laughs> no, you stop that. You stop that. <laughs> you want me to die, <laughs> Who is that, Mr. Nimbly. Look at this man. <laughs> it's okay. If you, okay. If if please, you, please, please, please. You I beg are not Let me read you. You have vaccinated. Because you cannot afford to leave the young girl, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you vaccinate? <laughs> you do these things? Oh, God. Let's move on. Asara Victor says, my team, Barca needs prayers. Uh, I think Busquet and Piquet uh, are long overdue. Umtitu too. I don't know what is wrong with him. Back pass and kwa, he says. All right. Uh, this one says, this is from uh, Chuck Ramos. It says, congratulations to Max Verstappen for winning the cover to title. The team has really done well. Uh, the show is live here in Somania. All right. Uh, goodbye, Ole. Villa Carter on Twitter says, Good evening to coach and Natalia's friend, uh, Cranting. Our United is on course. And for Komi, um, he says, And for Komi, we knew he was going to lose. Let me take a few messages from uh, WhatsApp as well. The WhatsApp messages, a lot of them have coming. This one says, 
Uh, Arsenal is back to winning ways with a big win against Harantim. That's a message from Napoleon in Tumusanko for base. Very consistent yeah. with his messages. Hello, Fentio. Congrats to Samuel Eto for becoming the president of the Cameroonian Football Association. I hope he brings a massive transformation to their football. Uh, I'm hoping that one day Stephen Apia becomes the president of the Ghana Football Association. Mm. Greetings to Akosia Oye at the Insawam Government Hospital. Thomas from Insawam Center. Tell him the football people here in Ghana. <laughs> they, yeah, will, they will let that they, happen. They will allow that to happen. Uh, uh, hello, Fentu. Please, good evening. I'm a diehard supporter of Chelsea, the Blues. Chelsea will win the treble this season. Greetings to your panelists. That's a message from Desmond Agbe Nyaso in Yeji Jakla. Uh, Jakla, number two. All right, thank you. Watching us all the way from Yeji. Junior says, please ask Coach Nimli to put his love for United aside and tell us honestly who he thinks is better between Messi and Ronaldo. Ho, ho, ho. This one says, Ranik and Milovan Raheva, they then be the same. One well, go project, sir. Ranik, uh, Bobby pressing, and Isha Allah. Greetings to Coach and the Oracle, and greetings to my Nungua friends. Maruf from Kaduna sent that message all the way from Nigeria. Thank you, Maruf. Uh, Maruf has message uh, friends from Nungua. Here, mm. interesting. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Please tell coach that Chelsea will win the league. I'm Roman Father from Brecum. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are playing the league for me. Tell coach, tell coach, tell, tell coach what? Coach of Watson. No, win the league is there. Uh, uh, Nimli, let me read my messages. <laughs> coach of Watson inside Takradi says Sterling penalty and City a win. Jorginho penalty and Chelsea the win. Mo Salah penalty and Liverpool the win. Ronaldo penalty and Man United the win. The EPL referees have started giving Christmas bonuses to the top teams. Interesting. This one says, this is a message from Princeton in my casino. It says, please, and please again, let's know the update from Barcelona Football Club. Now, we Barca fans are upset with the management of the club. Your match ended 2 2. We'll show you the highlights. Don't worry. This one says, uh, penalty galore. It's all good. Good haircut, man. Afote Emmanuel. Thank you, Afote. And on that note, I will take you uh, to the Etihad Stadium. That was where Manchester City hosted Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, Raul Jimenez decided to get himself sent off. Sterling scored a penalty in the second half. They won one. What a game uh, it was. And all of it, in fact, all of the second half was played with Wolverhampton uh, Wanderers down to 10 men because of that Jimenez red card. Arsenal didn't have any such problems. They easily dispatched Southampton by three goals to nil. All right, easy peasy. Arsenal winning by three goals to nil. Uh, now let's take you to Stamford Bridge and bring you this game between Chelsea uh, and Leeds United, three penalties were awarded in the match. Two of them to Chelsea, the other to Leeds United. Chelsea won three goals to two, but not without drama. Rudiger, they like fight foul. <laughs> the incident happened far away from you. The speed with which he joined the fight. You have to protect Harvest. Uh, you know? The junior Fepo pushed Harvest. He said, hey. <laughs> speed he takes Harvest. Uh, let me take you to Anfield. Uh, that was where Liverpool also needed a penalty uh, to win against Aston Villa. Steven Gerrard was returning to his old club as manager for the first time. Wasn't the kind of homecoming he would have expected as Liverpool uh, ran away 1-0 winners. Uh, so 1-0, um, Steven Gerrard did get some really good homecoming sort of from the fans, but he wasn't happy in the end because his team lost and he wanted to win. Uh, another penalty to show you. It, it doesn't end. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Man United took on Norwich City away from home, the bottom place team. United uh, were awarded a penalty. Ronaldo converted, and they also walked away 1 0 winners. All right, so the penalty, uh, Ronaldo converted. People say it was soft. I saw a tweet from uh, Peter Ederside, the former Super Eagles head coach. Uh, who said that if this one is a penalty, then the one awarded for Ghana against South Africa is also a penalty. So what can happen in, in Cape Coast can happen in England. It's normal <laughs> everywhere you look. Speaking about Nigeria, they've uh, parted ways with their head coach, uh, Gennot Raw, and put Augustin Egovon in temporary charge of the team. And they owed him a lot, of, about like eight months worth of salary or so. They were just waiting to find the money to pay him and sack him. They would have sacked him a long time ago. So... Genotro won't be leading Nigeria to the Africa Cup of Nations, unfortunately. Uh, Nimli, yeah. uh, let's just run through the games uh, very quickly. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll, Beginning I'll, with the one that just ended. Exactly, I'll start with the Man United uh, one. Uh, uh, they have faced a lot of shots. Of course, it's always been like that throughout the season, so yeah. far. And, and the uh, performance was, wasn't that yeah, great. Yeah, it, was, it was very, very flat. 
And I listened to Reinek after the game where he did clearly outline where the problem mm. was. He said the pressing from the front four was a bit short. And mm. Marcus Rashford, look, I think they have to put him somewhere. <laughs> if you are with Ronaldo, who should go and trigger the press? Right. You are a 23, 24 year old boy. You are partnering a 37 year old man. Who should go and trigger the press? He should start for he Ronaldo should, to follow. He should go and trigger. He should so lead. Ronaldo mm. will more or less press the options. Mm -hmm. But rather, he's allowing the 37 year old man to trigger the press. He he's allowing it. Bruno Fernandes to come and. Because it is. Four, two, two, two. two. Mm. You are the front two. You are there with Ronaldo. So you will trigger the press. And rather, Bruno leaves the, the, the middle two and go past Rashford. And clearly, I'm happy that the manager rightly pointed that out. Okay. That that was not good enough. And he expected them to play with some form of intensity. The intensity was not there yesterday. But you come on, is you united who came to town, Norwich, no matter how bad a club or a team they are at the moment, they are playing at home, they will definitely give you the fight. So I expected that to happen. But look, whether it is beautiful or not, it is three points in the back. United and a clean that. sheet. And a clean sheet. Perfect. Now, let's go to Stamford Bridge. Thank okay. you. You should be worried. Every Chelsea fan should, should be worried. Why should I be worried? should be worried because now it is becoming increasingly very clear that for Chelsea to win a football game, three a football match, they need to be scoring three or more goals. That is not acceptable. That is not the total Alotis way. He's never molded his team. They've considered he, eight goals in three matches. That now. is not acceptable. In the last three games, eight goals. Of course, if I'm the coach, you, no, no wonder the coach is worried. The defending is so shocking to me. Yeah. And this is a team that we all knew that once they go ahead, once they score first, it's game They were known to be shut in shop. Exactly. Now the tower man is... Licking in goals with ease. I so mean, to be fair, something has like to be the, done yeah. about it. And, and to be fair, Chelsea haven't been helped by the injuries. No, but also, is it, yeah, is I, it, no, I know. It's just it's a point where, like, it's worth pointing out. It shouldn't that, be an excuse, but it's worth pointing out that they've missed key players for a long time. But I'm more interested, Daniel, and this is why I want to bring you, I'm more interested in the Lukaku conundrum. We all talked about if he goes out, if he goes out, and Chelsea will stop. He's back, but he's not even. Being integrated that's, into the start of that should be directed Look, to the man who sanctioned the move. Me per, personally, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a problem, isn't it? Because it's Look, he's, he's, he's come back as a, at a bad time, he's come back at a time where the Chelsea team is just disjointed, things that's are struggling. not going well. It's, it's very difficult to, and, and if you watch the games, you can see none of them are on the same wavelength. The defense that looked very solid in sync all of a sudden looks all over the place. The midfielder looks in sync. The whole team looks some way. And, of course, he coming back, first of all, he's not fully fit as a stand. He still needs some, uh, some game time under his belt to be able to reach that full fitness. In a, in a period where the team is all over the place, it's obviously going to affect his game. We saw him in the Champions League where he was at the right place at the right time. He needs a couple of goals like that to get his confidence mm -hmm. back. But if he's trying to get his confidence and the team is also not... Um, pulling their weight is always going to affect him. That's why I, I don't think it's a problem. I think when this period writes itself out, of course, you come back in And this is a think, critical period. The games are yes, coming in but I think fast. personally for him, it's, it's also good because he's leading into the Club World Cup. And I think he'll do very well. It's, it's a much... Um, the pressure is not as much over there. I think he'll that do well. That's like February. It's a long time from now. Yes, but look, it's... There's a lot of games... He, he will, only two games there. Look, personally, I, I feel he will get there. He will get no, there. No, he he's, be, he's, look, a he get there. he's a solid he player. He's a solid player. He's used to there. there. He'll get and there. I think but, what is it? Just, just a minute, Granty. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe Thomas Tuchel hasn't gotten the right formula yet on how to play to the strength of Romelu Lukaku. I mean, Conte did say that. Yes, uh, that the part. way he's being used at Chelsea, Chelsea may not get the best from him. Maybe it is something we should be looking into. Yeah. Okay. Because if you spend ninety-eight million pounds on a player, exactly how. you should know exactly how you're going to use him. Yeah. Where he's going to fit, how the chemistry of the team is going to be revolving around. At least in the attacking sense, he's that focal point. 
He's always been that focused. Yeah, everywhere I think, he's look, been. At the beginning of the season, we, we saw the quality that he has. Yeah, I think yes. the team will settle down and I think he'll get back okay, to his best. But look, so. Fet, yeah. quickly, that Man City penalty, and this is the reason it's why not a penalty. the VR in, in the Premier League, I I'm, okay. I don't I don't get it. The ball Let's clearly, bring it back and look, see it again. The ball clearly hit <laughs> Moutinho's ribs or yeah. his armpit. And you could see once it happened, he waved his hand off and just did his hand like this. Because he in his head he knew that VR go and go and check go and view. And then they checked and checked. And you see, this is what I don't like. We all know the angle that shows the clear view of the thing. Yeah. And they were intentionally showing angles that will give you that perception that it was yeah. a handball. That's what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. The initial angle they showed clearly showed that the ball had hit his ribs. So why switch it and go to the plan and go to the top elevation and come just for it to look like it was a penalty? But it clearly wasn't a penalty. It's not fair because look, when a team is already down to a, a, a down a man and they play this solid defensive game, goalkeeper is on top of his game. And then you give away. It comes down to. Comes that. down to. It's not fair at all. Not fair. If yeah. Manchester City wanted to win the game, they had to push and win the game. Look, Liverpool got a penalty. It was clear. Man United got a penalty. It was clear. The two Chelsea penalties for me clear. Leeds, uh, Leeds United penalty clear. But if you are going to give City a penalty, and you are going to give them this sort of penalty, it doesn't make sense. And the interesting thing was that after the penalty, there was another incident in the game. Well, Moutinho blocked the ball again. And he walked to the referee and said, why did right, you give a foul for this? Give a for because this. it was All literally right. the same Very thing. Very interesting indeed. Uh, we'll take another short break here. When we come back, there's quite a lot to show you from the Bundesliga to La Liga to the Italian Serie A. And we can put more perspective on that penalty decision. I've got more of your messages as well. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. This is Quarkad on City TV. Uh, Daniel Granton had issues with the Man City penalty. He doesn't think English referees are consistent at all. Uh, we'll try and see uh, if you missed that penalty incident. We'll show it to you again. But let me show you the full results first and foremost from the Premier League weekend uh, so that you know. Uh, Tottenham and Brighton's match was postponed. But we witnessed a wonderful game between Crystal Palace and Everton. Uh, which ended 3-1 in favour of Crystal Palace. Jordan, are you assisted to go there? Uh, elsewhere, uh, Norwich City, Man United, Resort, you see Burnley and West Ham ended 0-0. Leicester hammered Newcastle 4-0. Yuri Tillemont scored twice in that game. James Madison, Pats and Dhaka with the other two goals uh, there. And the Friday night game, Brentford and Watford ended 2-1 in favour of Brentford. Uh, wonderful game of football. The Premier League continues... Uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday uh, for match week 17 games. So it should be very interesting indeed. Let me take more messages. Somebody says that uh, there will be s s he's interested in what the scenes will look like when Conte sanctions a swap deal for King and, King and, and Lukaku. Lukaku. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something I doubt, interesting. I doubt, I doubt if he would do that. That would be something. But I know that ideally, if you give him those two strikers, you know he who he yeah, would choose. Yeah, of course, he would take Lukaku. Exactly. He so Lukaku. let me read more messages and then we can move to Italy now. This one says, Xavi was he winning games against Asalaam Aleikum FC and Barcelona fans thought uh, he is the one to help them. Basa, why? You will soon play in the UEFA Conference League instead of Europa League. Opposition from Pandai sent that message. This message is from Pato Laundry Service. Uh, my very good friend in Kumasi. Pato. Is, uh, Pato. Big, big man you found. But when I went to Kumasi, you should have... Oh, I should have enjoyed I'm, I'm even shocked. Pato, Pato. I came to Kumasi. Next time Nimli comes there, look for him. Intentionally. And show him, and show him a good time. Uh, he's a, he's a support man you and... Wow, look. And, hold on. And House of Folk. Wow. In Kumasi, always the one organizing the House of Folk boys. Every time House of Folk comes into town. anytime I'm coming. He, leaves the, he does the ways and means for House of Folk when they go to Yeah, Kumasi. talking ways. That's how our clubs are suffering. I'm shocked. <laughs> I like their company and cool. Uh, more <laughs> messages. This one says, um, um, friend, coach is right. I beg for the sake of Komi, uh, don't go for that haircut again. Uh, to the bat in details, from the onset, Komi stood no chance against Lomachenko. The guy is a beast technically, and I wonder how he lost to uh, to a few more. Uh, Nidako in Kaneshi uh, with that message. Uh, this message says, uh, this is too long. Hello, guys. This is P. Coutinho from the Gambia. Since we are in the final year, 
uh, uh, May, in the year 2022, may you continue to surprise people like West Ham and Ajax. May you never live in your past glory like United. M may every resources you see come to you like... Mm. I'm sure you can answer it? Pep Guardiola, exactly. <laughs> uh, may you never be useless like Harry oh, yeah. Maguire. And when people look up to you like Messi... I said, may, may people look at you. Okay, I said, when people look at you like Messi, may you never disappoint them like Hazard. Uh, I pray for you. Uh, you will never struggle like Arsenal to make it in life. Believe in hard work like Liverpool. Uh, so you will never know shame like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Pride will never overtake you like Jose. May you continue to be steadfast like Cristiano. You will never fall from glory like the hair as you grow. Never depend on anyone like Barca, but continue to work and manage the little resources you have like buying. Even though men will despise you like Chelsea, always believe in yourself like Ibrahimovic. Finally, stick on the best and never be confused like my United fans. God bless you all. <laughs> there is so much for inconsistency. <laughs> inconsistency is so <laughs> what? Our friend from the Gambia with that message. That was quite long, but uh, thank you. This one says, Kome is pathetic. I think it should stop boxing. Boxing is not only about power. Since the days of Azuma Nelson, Ghana hasn't had a consistent champion. GBA, over to you. Charles from Madena. Klopas in what says, no, a very wait, good wait. evening. How can a former world champion be pathetic? I don't even know. No, Do you know how he became a world champion? Misses. Exactly. My message this evening is about Komi's future. I really hope his team is thinking about the retirement already. He took too much on Warrior's punishment last night, and his team should have stopped the fight early. Interesting. Uh, in Kemi Jalosin said, honestly, I think Komi was not well prepared for this fight. Ephraim from Winneba says, Rangnick should think of replacing Fred or McTominay with Bruno Fernandes. We have far too many attacking midfielders to fill Bruno's spot. Uh, Ah, Komi Alalo Machego to use his head for Chaskili. Derek from Danfa sent that message. This one says, I'm very happy. In Kensi from Kaswa says, I'm happy Chelsea conceded two goals. Over the past few weeks, they have been disturbing us with the best defensive team in England. In fact, Chelsea will suffer more than Liverpool because Mendy is going for the AFCON. All right. Harry Zuyani says, uh, good evening. My United is gradually cruising. We're running in charge. Allow Coach Chris to analyze the tactics in United's game this weekend. Greetings to Madame Barbara and her children, Bright, Ivana, Hans, and Efia. All right. Mambe Yabua Dankwaf in Fiapri says, uh, my Sunday evenings without scorecard is boring. Uh, it has, I'm on a night shift. Oh, are you a nurse? Too bad. Sorry, bro. Oh, sister. Sorry, sister. Sorry. Just tell her she can yeah. watch it again tomorrow. You can watch it at 1 p.m. tomorrow since you are off on Monday. Because if you are on duty on Sunday, now you have to be off on Monday. you close in the morning. Exactly. So rest. the show repeats 1 p.m. on uh, Mondays. Let's take you uh, and show you both highlights now. This time we are taking you to Udinese and AC Milan. That match ended 1-1. After that, we will also show you Venezia and Juventus, which also ended 1-1, both matches in the Serie A. All right, so that, uh, that's that. Juve drew, AC Milan drew, Napoli lost. Let me show you the four results, actually, from Serie A. Uh, they lost at home to Empoli. <laughs> Interesting, no one saw that coming. The biggest winners, Fiorentina, they won 4-0 against Salernitana. Salernitana, bottom of the table, of course, everyone is beating them. But Alfred Duncan, Ghana's very own, had a massively impressive game in that match. Uh, general losing at home to Sampdoria, 3-1 uh, as well. Uh, and then uh, you've got uh, Sassuolo also beating Lazio. No, uh, no one saw that coming. And Inter Milan won nine. four goals to nil. Four goals to nil for Inter Milan as well. Uh, Lazio losing. What's going on with Maurizio Sarri? Atalanta won away from home 2-1 as well. So that's the lowdown from the Serie A. All right, uh, Nimli, quick thoughts on the <laughs> results from the Syria. Uh, um, those two draws, but Napoli, we talked about them last week. It it's is looking like going from bad to worse. Yeah, it is looking like the challenge that I thought Napoli would give to Inter Milan and is AC. not there. And AC. Mm. AC themselves, very consistent, inconsistent. But for Ibrahimovic, I don't know where they will be. It's like Man United without Cristiano Ronaldo and David De Gea. Mm. But if you look at the Italian Serie A, uh, one thing that is happening for which I'm very happy is the fact that Juve is struggling. Because Why are you happy no, I'm, I'm, at I, another look, man's struggles? They've been so dominant eh, 
until recently when Inter stopped them. They had gone is it, nine times nine. as league champions. It is not healthy for the league. So Bayern are doing going that for a tenth now. That is why I support Bayern. I don't support them when they play in the Bundesliga. It is when they come to Europe, when they meet Cesar, as when you pair Cesar against Afonso <laughs> Davis, then I'm happy. You understand? <laughs> there, I know my happiness is secure. That's why I support them there. But for the Italian Syria, uh, I, I think the the exit of Ronaldo took something away from this from league. The league eh? But all of a sudden, Ibrahimovic, Lotaro, Martinez and co are doing their best. One thing that I'm not happy about is the... Uh, going back of Jose Marino, it is not working. I don't know what at is all. happening. Roma are at all Roma. over the They place. are all over the place in six seasons. When you watch them play, you can clearly see the manager standing on the touchline and not getting his message across. The players look so disjointed and confused all over the yeah. place. But the, the Mourinho project at Roma was always going to be was always going to be shaky. The Roma yeah. squad is not up to standard. At all. They were never going to challenge for, for, for any title. These yeah. players. And In I fact, think that's he why accepted respect, that job yeah, that's, too early. That's why I respect Mourinho for going there. Going there because it's like he's He's going there to build this team and get them back to where they belong. It's not going to take one season not to do at all, that. Not at all. I like the fact that the people at Roma have taken their time with him. They understand where they are. Look, you, you can't win. How are you going to win a league? Your, your rival forward is Lautaro Martinez and Osimen, and you have Tammy Abraham. It's not going to work. It's going to take a couple of, of, of seasons. And Mourinho understands that. Roma understands that. So I think it's a bit unfair to demand that. And yeah. they win the title. They must be competing. Maybe for the top title. four Europa. And it's top four. Good, yeah, top four in my view. Them. But from yeah. the way it's looking, he's he's got to battle AC, battle Napoli, battle Inter, Lazio. Maybe it's a quite Europa tough. League. Yeah, yeah, it's very tough. Very uh, tough uh, let's take you to uh, Germany. Uh, that was where Bayern Munich uh, extended their lead at the top of the Bundesliga table to six points now. Uh, they beat Mainz 05 by two goals to one. And then Borussia Dortmund were held to a one-all draw by VFL Boku. All right, so uh, that's the uh, result there. Dortmund failing to win. Uh, Bayern, of course, winning uh, quite comfortably in the end. The four results from the Bundesliga. This is what it looks like. Uh, Cologne lost at home to Augsburg. Bayern still won't win against Meister. Leipzig, after firing their coach, are back to winning ways. Uh, they won 4-1 against Munchen Gladbach, another team struggling this season. Freiburg lost at home to Hoffenheim. Uh, Hertha Berlin, 2 0 winners of a BLF field. VfL Bochum's draw against Dortmund there. Wolfsburg lost at home to Stuttgart. Greta Fert, they beat Union Berlin 1 0. And Frankfurt beat Leverkusen 5 2. Daniel? Greta Fert's first win of, first win of the season. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Greta Fert's first wow. win of the season. Very wet pointing out. So the Bundesliga quite it's shaping up. Uh, at the moment, suddenly it looks like Bayern Munich are separating themselves from the rest. Six point gap at surprised? this stage of the season. There's no, there's no way they are giving. No, but that you, up. you should not be surprised about that because no, is it? Nice. The, this is the issue. When they any time they meet their direct competitor, they beat them. They beat them. <laughs> The rest of the teams in the league, they are just there to add to the numbers. Yeah. Add to the add to the numbers. But look. Fent, on the more serious notes, yes, Bayern are a mile away from every other team in the Bundesliga. But when you watch Bayern even play in Europe, look at the arrogance with which yeah. they play. Forget about the fact that in midweek they disciplined Barcelona. But I think they'll win the Champions League if, if nobody's... Look, I don't think it doesn't look like anyone is capable of stopping I, them. I, I don't think so. Is, is what you are saying? Is of course. Is he anybody who beats Bayern Munich to the Champions League title will beat them not because they will outplay Bayern, but because it will be one of those days. No. You know who knocked them out last season? Who did? PSG. You watched PSG. that game? Yes, I did. You saw PSG what happened? deserved to win. You saw what happened? Yes, PSG deserve to win. Nobody made a mistake. PSG beat them. They took their chances. They, That's what they, I'm saying. That online is one of those days. Okay, and Lewandowski didn't play both legs. That's it. No, but I know. I know the but team. But if they have, I know the team that will easily beat Bayern if they who? get them. Liverpool easily. 
Liverpool beat uh, look, maybe this, look, yes. This buy oh, team, that is true. This buy maybe team, maybe I serious am. defensive problems. Maybe Liverpool, yes. Serious defensive maybe problems. Maybe Liverpool are agree. Liverpool but apart from Liverpool. Man, yeah, Liverpool front three get this team. They will destroy them. But you know that the Champions League draw is on Monday, eh? Mm -hmm. Of course. And you can see the possible permutation, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, Charlie. <laughs> 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 is, what is the view of it? Uh, let me show you one game from, for the, them. Is it? No, like from the La Liga <laughs> coach. We need to They're show more highlights. <laughs> let me show you one more game. One game from the La Liga. Of Sassuna against Barcelona. It ended 2 or Barcelona now uh, have not... Uh, I'm not sure. They, they can't seem to get any victories out of anywhere. Xavi, after the initial victories, now things are falling apart. Um, they said what? Uh, somebody said that they were... I think how many points behind... Real Madrid, when Coman left. It were 12 points, and then it became 16. Right? And then uh, now nice it looks stretching. like it's a 16 point gap or so between them and Real Madrid. Real Madrid beating Atletico Madrid now. Friends, I, I need somebody to explain this to me. So let me ask the question this time. Uh -huh. Why is it that when big teams in recent times, when big teams are in need of serious rebuilds, they hand the team over to managers who are now leaning on the job? I don't know. When Juventus were going to rebuild, they gave it to Pelu. When Man United clearly needed a rebuild, they gave it to Uli. Arsenal, they've given it to Arteta. Xavi, Barcelona have given him the job. And you know the funny thing? They all have this hope that the managers will do something. You've not seen the guy do it before. You've not seen it done before. And this is a critical time. So why would you hand an inexperienced team in poor form to an inexperienced manager and hope for top results. Ah, ah Charlie, they should keep up when they are tired, they will let him go. You see, um, in the case of Barcelona, Lacranti rightly said, I have always maintained that Xavi, in my view, is the man to rebuild Barcelona. The way Barcelona goes about their thing, hardly have they been successful when they bring somebody who is a complete outsider into their fold over the years. You mean in recent years? Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. So it is very, very proper that in building this team and bringing it back to where... Look, if you watch them play, you can clearly see the La Masia clearly evident. It's, not, it's not three points. At the end of the day, the every, you see, every big team will we undergo did. whatever they've undergone. Yeah. My man United is eight still and a half years. Still undergoing it. Eight and a half years still undergoing that. Yeah. Real Madrid, we all saw. They went. When it took them 10 years. Even last season, Real Madrid was supposed to be going on a rebuild. But no, he but, finished second, three points behind. No, but this last season, season last with the season same young squad, last season, season, the La Liga. Last season. Because no. the people in charge Real were Madrid, top quality guys. Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Madrid have the have same Zidane. Last season, didn't they yes, sign? Yes, they had Zidane. the same squad. Yes. Have you seen the average age of this Real Madrid? No, but wait. they are youngsters. No, 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 no. Every player in this Real Madrid team, apart from Kamavinga, was there last season. They are right back. They are left back. Them. All of them. So that's not a rebuild. Felan Mendy is young. No, but no, but he has Felan been. Mendy was there. Last his we were all talking about Vinicius. Look at the attack. Apart Vinicius from Vinicius have been you look there for at more than four years. You look at Jovic. You look at they Vinicius. They've been there for more than they've four years. They've been there, but they are young guys. So, but they are now playing politics because they are playing so, under a manager. So, he knows what he's so, about. So, so therefore, mm -hmm. so therefore, they've been there for more than two, three years. Coach, they are people so in the Barcelona that, culture no. who are more experienced okay. to take over right. this job. Guys, when no. the team we, is we set like Pep Guardiola, they need to talk about. To come and take it. We need to talk about something that means Javi a lot. Javi is to setting me. himself up to fail. Uh, F1. All right. Earlier today, Max Verstappen was crowned the new world champion, the new Formula One world champion after he won the Abu Dhabi uh, Grand Prix in some dramatic fashion. All right, so congratulations to Max Verstappen. He won uh, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and the World Championship. But what has happened today, personally, I think for anyone watching F1 today would have been very disappointed at the way the sport, the race ended, the season ended. A very wonderful season, absolutely ruined by Michael Marcy, the race director. Because that call at the end, personally, you may, be, you may talk about 
applying the rules to the letter or to the letter. But you can't apply the rules half-heartedly. If you're going to allow lapped cars unlap themselves, let all the lapped cars unlap themselves. Don't let only five cars unlap themselves and put Lewis in such a dangerous position where he had no chance. Great strategy by Mercedes undone by the race director. Mercedes protested, it's thrown away, they have appealed that decision or indicated their intention to appeal. And that will happen. But at the end of the day, even Max himself would not have been so happy. Because so far this season, we have seen situations where races have finished behind the safety car. Like in Monza, or like in Spa, in Belgium. Two laps, two laps. They went around two laps just so they could have, uh, they, could, they could give half points to everybody. Simply because they wanted the race to have been assumed to have finished. Why couldn't that have happened today? Couldn't the race have finished behind the safety car? If this wasn't the final race of the season, are you telling me that Michael Massey would not have allowed that race to finish behind the safety car? The whole let them race idea, this is not how they intended, this is not how Nicolada intended it to be when he said, let them race. But it happened, and he's champion. But Lewis Hamilton, the eighth, will come. Whether next year or two years from now, the best for Stappen, congratulations to him. I cannot say that he didn't deserve to win, but this is not how the season was supposed to end. Welcome to my TED Talk. And that's our show for tonight. Until next time, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Chris. Do take care of yourself. I'll see you next Sunday.